What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I am here in Denver, Colorado, and we are officially into our fifth season growing gourmet mushrooms for the markets here in Denver. Now, that's a big accomplishment for us. I really appreciate all of you guys, all of our customers at Cherry Creek Farmers Market and our other market venues. And I just wanted to share that wonderful news with you guys um, and talk about some of the things that we're about to do. So scaling up is the topic of this video. And you can see behind me, um, these are all of the blocks that I'm about to inoculate today. So some people might not consider uh, our small scale mushroom farm a commercial farm. We get a lot of criticism, but over the past four years, we've produced between 75 and 100 pounds a week for 35 weeks a year. So that equates to about 10,000 pounds of fresh gourmet mushrooms that we have delivered to the markets here in Denver. And that really means a lot to me to provide fresh food for all of our customers. And at grossing at $24 a pound, you can do the math on that. If you would like to learn how to grow mushrooms for market um, and make a living. So you can check out our ebook. It's on Etsy. It's called Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market, How to Make a Living Growing Fresh Mushrooms at Home. And the, all the information is in that book that we talk about in our videos. And there's links to our products that we use, the videos that we use, and a lot of helpful tips on getting your own mushroom farm started. So that being said, today I'm going to talk about scaling our cordyceps production. So I'm not an expert in cordyceps. I never claim to be an expert at even growing mushrooms. I just kind of describe what I've gone through and I produce all these videos just to go back and look at what I've done to change my process over the years and hopefully I can convey my mistakes to you guys so you don't repeat those mistakes and that way it adds value to the marketplace. I also learn a lot from you guys so I appreciate all the feedback and I appreciate you guys watching me along this journey so far. So if you haven't seen our videos on Cordyceps Militaris, you can check out our playlist, Cordyceps Militaris Cultivation. It goes through a few different breeding techniques that I've done and different um, cultivation techniques. So I'm still working this out. To me, Cordyceps is kind of my hobby and I have had a little success here and there, but it's been a bumpy road. That being said, um, I feel like I had a good handle on the deli cup technique and I was using two of the strains that I bred in house, the MMX3 and the MMX5. A lot of you guys have had even better success than me, so I'll post some pictures of some of the, our customers who've grown these really wonderful looking cordyceps and I'm definitely proud of you guys for achieving even better results than me. Um, so that being said, this past season, I tried to scale up our cordyceps production. So my idea was to 10x what I did last year. And by doing that, I would need to increase my efficiency. Otherwise, it would just take 10 times the work. So Matt over at Lion's Mane, shout out to Lion's Mane Equipment and Supply, who they produce the uh, media extractor. He hooked me up with this awesome veterinary gun that is used to inoculate antibiotics into agricultural animals. So, um, I'll post a link to that or you can check out Lion's Mane Equipment and Supply and reach out to Matt because he has a really good source for these glass um, automa automatic pipetters basically and I'll walk through the process of that. However, as in most businesses and especially in mushroom farming, once you have one procedure dialed in and you try to scale it up, there's a lot of problems that unfold along the way. So this is our cordyceps 
um, after two months now and you can see there's definitely some fruiting bodies that are forming along the perimeter but this is definitely not the results that I was hoping for. I'll walk through my scaling procedure and I'm definitely going to harvest a few trays of these with cordyceps all along the edge but one thing I noticed is that the depth of these trays was not equal and it kind of shifted during my sterilization. Um, it could also be the weakening of my strain. So this is probably the fourth run that I've done with the MMX3 and it's the, it's the lowest yielding run. So that could be a sign of senescence. Um, although some of the customers out there are getting really good yields off of that same batch. So it might be the depth of the substrate. It could be the nutrients that I used. I tried to slim down that recipe a little bit. Um, it could be the rice. It could be the moisture content. It could be the temperature. So there's a lot of factors that go into scaling up your production. All right, that was a long intro. Thanks for hanging in there. I will turn this camera around and go through my procedure and then I'll pick these mushrooms and start my next year's breeding of the Cordyceps militaris. I'm really hoping to get some wild Cordyceps this year. We're going to Telluride in August and I've got a bunch of friends in Syracuse, which is why I'm wearing this hat. That's where my wife is from and it's about to be Cordyceps season in late July, early August. So if you find any Cordyceps militaris, and you're willing to send them in the mail, shoot me a DM or email me at Fresh From The Farm Fungi and I'll give you a nice shout out in our next breeding video. I'm just looking to bolster our in-house strains so that we can scale up our cordyceps production.
What's up everyone? So I did my um, preparation, my rice prep for this bulk cordyceps run. I want to give a shout out to um, Lion's Mane Equipment and Supply in Denver for hooking us up with this vet gun that I'm about to demonstrate on this video. And also I would like to give a shout out to Con Park with USA Cordyceps for originally giving me the idea to scale the cordyceps production. So he, if you haven't seen any of his content, go check him out. He does a lot of these tray style grows, um, which really helps increase the efficiency if you're making your own cordyceps liquid cultures. So if you're interested on in how I got these, check out our um, the uh, hyper breeding video and it will explain how to make a multi-spore liquid culture out of cordyceps. So what I have over here is two liters of the MMX3 strain that I bred from the um, hyper breeding video. And then I've got a few of these pan trays. That I think they're eight and a half by 13 inch pans. And then I found these Tupperware containers. Um, they are PP5 Tupperware. So they survive the sterilization and I filled them with rice and then I'll put my, um, my rice recipe in the description below. But basically I made a broth with peptone, kelp, and um, cornstarch and some corn syrup mixed it all together, poured it in the rice so it was slightly under hydrated. So I'm going to inoculate all of these containers with liquid culture and then they'll colonize and we'll throw them into our cordyceps section here at our lab in Denver. Okay guys, I'll flip this around. Um, one thing I wanted to point out though, as an alternative to the vet gun, you can also just use a glass syringe here. Um, that's what I've been using up until this point, but I wanted to test out this instrument here, which will really save time pulling and expelling the liquid culture. Um, I also like to use these 16 gauge aluminum needles they're nice and wide so that if the liquid culture is too clumpy, it won't be an issue. So I suggest using 16 gauge. Um, these are one and a half inch needles so that I can stab into the substrate and kind of get a good distance coverage while I'm inoculating my liquid culture. Another thing that I wanted to point out is I like to have these um, silicone tubes sterilized on hand so that if anything happens during this process, I can just swap out the tubing for some fresh tubing. So those are my tips for my bulk inoculation of the cordyceps. I'm gonna flip this camera around, put on my lab coat, and start to inoculate these so you guys can see my process um, for inoculating all of these different containers. I also do have some of these delis that were sterilized inside of some spawn bags. So I'm gonna use these. Um, I couldn't find any more lids that were PP5. So I'm just gonna grow them inside of these spawn bags and maybe um, I'll be able to reuse these in the future. Okay guys, so I'm gonna mask up for this process. Um, but my plan is to work from left to right. And like I said, I like to use these 16 gauge needles. So I'll set a couple of those off to the side for now. And I'll begin by just examining this um, port right here and make sure that it's still clean. And opening these veterinary instruments so shout out to Lion's Mane for hooking us up with these vet guns. But basically the principle is that this will just attach to this tubing.
and all this was sterilized in a pressure cooker for about 90 minutes. Um, you can see with the validation tape here that it's all sterilized. And I'm just trying to line up this threading so that I can see the uh, the markings. All right, there we go. Okay, so now if you look closely, there's a little port right here that's going to connect to the silicone tubing. So I'll open up some fresh tubing. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around this threading. And then I'm going to use this jar to expel some of the liquid culture. Okay, so now that we primed the pump, I will open up my sterile needle. And we are set to inoculate. So I will begin my process from left to right. And I'll start by inoculating these green jars here and I'm just going to try to cover the entire surface And as long as I seal these bags up near the top, I will be able to reuse these bags in the future. And then hopefully it will help maintain the moisture and um, keep these cordyceps happy. Okay. these Tupperware containers.
All right, so there you have it. I inoculated my bulk cordyceps rice pans. Some things that I noticed was it was very difficult to tell where I inoculated the liquid culture. So kind of coming up with a sweeping motion was critical. Another thing is that when it was refilling with the liquid cultures, there was a few times where maybe there was some clumping inside the liquid culture. So maybe using them a little bit faster. These are a few weeks old. They've been on the stir bar for a little while and got pretty chunky. Another option would be to um, increase the size of the tubing. So the tubing that's going into the glass, I think is a, a smaller gauge than this silicone tubing. So if I just cut some more pieces, that might help with that problem. Other than that, it's a really easy process. I recommend sterilizing these two pieces separately so that the pressure will keep the integrity of this seal. So there's a little bit of maintenance with this, uh, with this dispenser, but it's overall a really nice tool. So thanks again, Lions Main Denver, for hooking us up with this inoculation tool. And I look forward to scaling up my cordyceps production. All right, guys, I'm going to throw these into fruiting and I'll play some clips as they start to develop. Um, if you haven't checked out our new book, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. It's an ebook with integrated links to all products that we use personally here in Denver, as well as a few links to our videos. Check out our breeding project immaculate inoculation that's a really good walkthrough on how we come up with our strains for our gourmet mushroom farm it's been 72 hours since we inoculated these cordyceps mushrooms with the vet gun so i'm just going to do a quick breeze over and make my observations it looks like they're coming in nicely um, i ended up doing some of these pans with the uh, five pound grow bag because some of the um, the lids that came with these little Tupperware containers sunk during the sterilization process. So I just capped them off with some bags just like with these pans that I have here. And it seems to work really well. This is after 72 hours. You can see it's already starting to come in a little orange in some of the thicker spots. Um, one thing I noticed with the pans is that towards the edges, it didn't get a good colonization. So that's something that I'll have to correct for in the future, but it's definitely colonizing nicely and it looks contamination free. These rounder ones have a really nice perimeter. So they weren't as finicky, but you can see right there, I missed a spot. And then these little deli containers are coming in nicely as normal. What's up everyone? So it's been about five weeks since we did our bulk inoculations with all these different types of containers. We are getting some really good results on the trays right now. Um, so this is our MMX3 and you can see it's just starting to pin along the edges. Um, So there's some fruiting bodies kind of developing right in here. And then we've got some larger ones starting off the side. So I'm noticing with these firmer trays, it seems like the fruiting bodies are kind of forming on the outside along the surface and in between the substrate. And that could be a result of the substrate shrinking down or having uh, too thick of a layer. So the next time around, I'm going to shoot for about a half an inch in thickness. And hopefully that will give us more um, pinning on the surface. That being said, we're getting really good colonization um, with the delis in these little spawn jars, which I liked nicely because you could just inject it right in the top and it colonized super fast. 
Um, and then I also did another big batch of these just grain bags. So I didn't even include this deli container, which I thought was important for the shape of the substrate. But you can notice right here that we're starting to get some nice pinning on these little um, spawn bags with rice. And I was able to fit about 75 of these bags in one run. So this was definitely much more efficient than the pan techniques. But I'll flip this around really quickly, kind of show you the updates on the colonization after five weeks. It was a, a little bit warm about a week ago. Um, I was having problems with my cooling, but now the temperatures are back down into the 60s. And right now it's about 61, 62. So I think that the cordyceps will continue to fruit on the surface and we should have a harvest in about i would say about 10 to 15 days all right so these are the trays and right here you can see the cordyceps just starting to pin all along the edges here and then if we come up to this edge here you can see some really nice cordyceps with that beautiful club structure and then a bunch of pins starting to form as we go in the middle and then I kind of scan the surface and normally I would see a bunch of pinning kind of inter intermittently spursed out but it seems like they're preferring those edges like this corner right in here and then same thing with this bag, we're getting some pinning on the edges as opposed to right on the surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up and stay tuned for more mycology videos like these. I'm going to dive into our scaling of Cordyceps militaris and pretty soon I'll be talking about how we're gonna scale up our gourmet mushroom production um, there's a lot of hiccups on the way with putting together this new building, which I'll do a whole video on that as well. It's really good learning experience, but it's definitely taking way longer than I thought it would. Um, thus, why I'm still producing our mushrooms here in Denver instead of Sedalia. All right, guys.